Excellent. Um, again, thank you everybody for uh, joining us this uh, this evening. Uh, this is the Lalma Lincoln Park Neighborhood Transportation Management Program meeting. Um, thank you again for, for joining us. This is our second uh, virtual meeting uh, for this particular NTMP for this neighborhood. And today um, we are here to basically, you know, show you the different projects uh, that we have, you know, sort of proposed. So if you don't mind going to the next slide, please. Um, so the agenda for this evening, um, obviously we're gonna do a little bit team introductions. We're gonna give you uh, a project update where we are on our timeline and what will be sort of like the next steps. Um, then Brad is gonna go over, you know, the each proposed projects that we have. Um, the, you know, the mid-range for the, the short-term projects, the mid and then the long-term, and then we'll be happy to take your questions um, as, you know, sort of, a, we have two Q&A chunks um, during this presentation today. Um, so please, if you already have questions, feel free to start typing them in on the chat there. It's open. Um, and so we hope to, you know, have a fruitful, you know, meeting. And, and if we're missing any information, if we're going too fast, um, definitely please let us know. Um, it is a little bit more on the technical side um, today than in other, than in other meetings. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I kind of went over a little of this, you know, specifically a little bit. Um, obviously, just, you know, in the chat, you know, let's be friendly, courteous uh, to each other. Um, you are muted. Um, and, and unfortunately, you will not be able to see other meeting participants, but definitely please feel free to join us, um, you know, chat away, like tell us your questions in the chat. And, you know, we will tell, you know, voice them um, if you let us with your name. Um, obviously, in the bottom of your screen, you will see the, the Q&A button. Um, you know, hopefully you, uh, most of us at this point, hopefully have you zoomed enough to, uh, to sort of understand the process. And again, we will have two Q&A segments and where we hope to answer your questions. The first one is maybe a little bit short um, in order to give uh, everybody ample time um, to, so we can give Brad ample time to go over the projects and, and you know, the second half of our meeting. Um, next slide. And so sort of the, the, the project team that we, you know, that, that we have is uh, myself, Gabi Cerrado. Um, I am a Dottie project manager, uh, community on the transportation design. And I help uh, coordinate and manage a couple of projects in council districts two, three, and seven. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and get Brett to introduce himself. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, my name is Brett Boncori. I'm uh, with Dottie as well in our design group. I'm uh, the NTMP program manager and kind of helping with a lot of the design pieces on this project. So thanks for joining us. Ms. Emily. Hi, I'm Emily Cushman. I'm one of the engineers helping with the design and uh, of the projects. Mr. Michael. Hi, I'm Mike Wallen. I am the area transportation engineer for the Lincoln Park Alma neighborhoods. Jess. Hi, I'm Jessica Hernandez, and um, I am with Apex Design, a transportation planner, and we are supporting Dottie on this project. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Ball, and I'm also with Apex Design, uh, supporting Dottie. This is your dream team. Um, so next slide, please. So um, we do have a, also a very robust stakeholder committee. Some of you uh, actually are joining us here today as well. We have shared this information also with them and they have provided us some valuable uh, input and feedback as you will see all the stakeholders, uh, you know, the, the different groups that they represent um, right in front of you. So um, thank you so much uh, to our stakeholders who actually you know, it's, uh, you know, aside from attending, you know, the, the meetings is actually also letting your neighbors know and um, definitely not being shy about providing us feedback about how can we improve uh, the projects and, and, the, and the process itself. So um, thank you for, you know, just a general thank you for to my stakeholders for definitely volunteering your time through um, this entire project. Um, next slide. Um, and sort of with that, um, as you know, you, this is the, the NTMP process. It tries to be sort of relatively quick for, for, for 
general DOTI transportation sort of standards. The intent is, is, is to be a very collaborative process where we work with community uh, uh, to figure out, to first identify, you know, we started this back in August. Um, and trying to figure out exactly sort of what are the issues in Alma Lincoln Park. Then we, you know, throughout all of this, we had uh, the different uh, community inputs and um, the stakeholder meetings that we had. So the first touch point with the community as in a public level um, was in October 2020. Before that, we had the stakeholder committee um, before that state, you know, that committee input. And then, you know, we are in that number two uh, touch point. Um, where at this point, you know, we, in the first one, in the first uh, first couple of months, it's identifying where the issues are lying. And then we had that big chunk in between where basically our team, um, our dream team basically was out there doing site visits and getting traffic counts and, and trying to figure out exactly sort of which, you know, what are the issues and kind of, kind of thinking a little bit of, you know, if a particular solution didn't, didn't start, what, did, what could be another one? Uh, thinking a little bit outside the outside the box to generally address the the, the process the, the the issues that you all you know helped us identify originally. Um, it is the our goal is to basically you know we are in this second one where you will be able to see our pro, the different proposed projects um, and you can help us prioritize them. We do have a limited funding for implementation, um, but it is the hope that basically we can get this baby wrapped up in the um, April May timeframe and we can start kicking off with implementation um, of this project. So once, you know, that's what we're trying to achieve is just to have that sort of finalist um, in order for our engineering team to sort of start kicking it off and bring it and start bringing them to fruition. Um, so hopefully that will be the April, um, May of this year timeframe. Next slide. Um, and so in that first community touch point, you know, we could get, um, if you remember, we had a survey um, that we put out there and we try to push it out as much as possible, where we basically asked you, okay, you know, what are your sort of priorities in La Malinka Park? Um, and, you know, in, in total, we did receive a pretty good, uh, even with COVID and the situation that is happening and you know, obviously you also remember, you know, between October and November, you know, we had another one of those peaks. And so uh, overall, we did have a pretty good, you know, feedback in total. So um, in the survey itself, the, um, what is it, the social pinpoint survey that, that we're testing out actually with this, with this NTMP, we had 68 respondents, but in total, we had 290 comments, which is pretty awesome. And I think it's pretty in par with what we have seen in other NTMP uh, neighborhoods where we've had that, you know, that even that face-to-face, -face, um, you know, communication. Um, what's actually pretty unique, not pretty unique, but it's pretty interesting, I find it pretty interesting, is, is that the sort of the prioritization of, you know, what you told us, you know, uh, what are your priorities as folks that live, work, and play in, in La Alma Lincoln Park? And as you can see, it's pretty darn even throughout, you know, obviously with improving sidewalk connectivity and comfort, you know, being, you know, right at the top, but then we have improving, again, pedestrian crossings, um, and comfortable facilities, um, and then that access to buses. But all throughout the list is, you know, you know, the point differential is like three. Um, so I think in general, it's just improving that multimodality pretty much straight across um, on this. Um, but we certainly like to thank you for providing that and, and it guided us onto okay, what, what kind of solutions can we start implementing um, in these different locations that, that you will see. Next slide, Steph. Um, so, you know, how we basically, as, you know, we identified all of these projects, you know, on the internal side of things, um, we had, you know, we already had a pretty good database of where how we felt that, you know, the potential locations where we could see the spots, you know, the trouble spots in the neighborhood. Um, we do get a decent number of 311 requests in this neighborhood, which is great. Um, if, you know, that is a lot how uh, Dottie bases, um, the, you know, sort of where our demand, where our issues are at. So it does help a lot when a community it's already feels comfortable enough with the 311 system. So we already had a pretty robust base sort of right there. But then in addition to that, um, actually we were lucky in Lama Lincoln Park that we also have the community transportation networks efforts happening um, right before us. And that includes projects in Lama um, because they themselves did their own outreach that, you know, of like, hey, tell us where 
your issues are lying. And it was not just bikeway issues. Tell us a little bit of everything. So we also had that database, you know, to sort of base it on. And then in addition to that, you know, we had the stakeholder feedback, which is why having, you know, our stakeholder group, you know, um, definitely feeling part of the process is crucial uh, for us. And then on top of that is that supplemental with that online survey that is truly open to the public and that, you know, obviously it helps when, you know, you tell your neighbors and your neighbors tell your neighbors and so forth, because then we had a pretty good um, robust, you know, sort of internal what has been brought in. Um, in addition to that, obviously, you know, being Dottie, we look at data. And so, you know, we, we did a vision zero analysis of where the crash is taking place and the different mitigations that could help. Um, and then on top of that, you know, sort of that additional data layer is, um, is having our team, like I mentioned, going out there and performing these site visits and gathering um, traffic counts and, and, you know, putting cameras so we can see exactly sort of how the movements of, you know, of people are happening throughout this area. So in total, you know, we did sort of like 11 reviews um, at 85 intersections. So that's why it's, you know, up between, you know, after the survey, that first original survey closed and until now we have been a little bit quiet just because we were in that data gathering and in the data processing sort of, you know, zone. Um, and that's how we can sort of, we can now get to this point where we can show you, you know, sort of the different proposed projects. Um, next slide. And if by any chance, again, if I'm going fast and or if there's any questions or anything like that, please feel free to tell me. I tend to speak a little bit fast. Um, and just a reminder of how, and you know, how this whole NTMP process goes. Um, we usually, you know, and for most, you know, for most NTMPs, we have three buckets of basically how, you know, we process, you know, the, the, the improvements, right? The operational and safety bucket are those really sort of really quick short-term that we can get in and out the door because they're done, you know, through work orders, internal and dotty. Um, and, you know, these are primarily <clears throat> sort of those, those paint um, and signal timing and, and changing the alignment or the daylighting elements um, in the, um, in, in our processes. So, so those are meant to be sort of that quick um, in there. The NTMP projects are those that are six to 24 months that do require some level, some additional level of data gathering, um, engineering design, um, and then our, our internal discussions basically um, where how we can, you know, we can figure out how to implement it. This is, you know, this is part also, this is one of the things that you're gonna help us prioritize because we do have limited funding for each neighborhood NTMP. Um, so we do have limited funding. And of course, you know, we identified a lot of other projects that we may not be able to fund right now, but obviously now that we know them, we can start figuring out how to, you know, fund them, but obviously a, a potentially a much, you know, a later date. And then we have those really big projects that, you know, future projects that do require, um, you know, that either higher level coordination with either CDOT, railroads, or, um, or, at the, or they require a lot more analysis um, overall, or in all honesty, a lot more funding uh, to do, um, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, conversions, um, hawk signals, like that type of stuff that is much, you know, that we need to sort of work our way to it, uh, that have a pretty high, um, basically, cost uh, for it. Um, now, again, so what is a little bit interesting about La Alma in, in Lincoln Park is that we kind of have this other bucket of, you know, we have so many other projects, you know, other programs and projects taking place in this neighborhood that we kind of have this sort of fourth bucket out there where if we have heard, you know, through our community outreach um, that you wanted something in specific, specifically and then there is this other project that could, that could potentially take care of it then basically we have sort of make sure that on that other, you know, that that project PM is aware of it so they can change the design and include it um, in their, um, on their, under their scope. Um, this usually in all honesty doesn't happen to with a lot of um, NTMP neighborhoods. Um, I think this one, you know, we just got, you know, very lucky. So, um, and then uh, the next slide, I think actually, oh, there we go. So we are first on our first, Q and A segment, and I do believe that we have um, a question. Or um, and, and again, if you have questions, comments in general about the process, how did you felt about using um, social pinpoint? I think we definitely would like to know. This was our first time using that 
um, that tool um, for Dottie. And it seemed like we got some pretty good feedback, but if by any chance, you know, definitely let us know if you if you don't have, if, if your experience was a little bit different, it seemed that it was easy enough, but anything that you have, please feel free to ask. Uh, so Ms. Jess, do we have any good stuff out there? We do, we do. So there um, are two questions actually from John. And um, the first one, um, I'm happy to answer. The question is, um, John left a bicycle comment on Mariposa next to the La Alma Lincoln Park that wasn't shown on the map. There wasn't a bike symbol. And so um, we actually, on the map, we summarized the comments. And so locations that had five or more comments, we um, added symbols to. Um, for locations that had less than that, we did note that there were comments, but we didn't symbolize them. It helps the map to be a little bit more readable. So we did um, receive your comment. And I can, if it would be helpful, I can um, stick the location of how you can download that map so that you can um, see it yourself in the in the chat in a second. And then the second question is, why is a study needed to reduce a speed limit? Um, why wouldn't it just be reduced wherever danger is identified? And so, Brett, do you want to take that question? Yeah, sure. So, um, <clears throat> In keeping with national uh, best practice in engineering, um, we, if we are going to change the speed limit of a roadway, we, we do need to see what the speed limits are currently. Um, and we, we look at a thing called the 85th percentile to see that. Now we are actually internally looking to see if we can go even lower to the 50th percentile to go what the average speed is and then post at that. There is an exception to that though, if, if um, just kind of how Denver does it and the, our, our, our traffic engineering policies dictate, we, we can look at a roadway and that is what the evaluation is. We can look at a roadway to see if that speed limit just isn't appropriate for the land uses uh, that it goes through. So say we had, um, a, a you know a formerly industrial area uh, transition to to a more residential or commercial area where there's a lot more pedestrian activity you know there are situations where we could go lower and not have to look necessarily at the 85th percentile but that still is uh, that's what we mean by evaluate as well so that's kind of part of that evaluation piece and typically we do um, give those to our vision zero team to do, they, they do this uh, commonly and are actually going through kind of a citywide evaluation on different corridors. And so that's why you might see it in the future projects section uh, for speed limit evaluation. But good question. Brett, there's one more question. I think that you um, answered a, a part of it, but. Um, John wanted more information about um, how the 85th percentile system is still yeah, being yeah. used. Yeah, yeah. so you're right. I mean, it is, we're moving away from using the 85th percentile, just like I mentioned. So we're going more towards the 50th percentile. Um, that's, that's where our um, uh, where so traffic engineer has been comfortable doing so far. Uh, then again, with those exceptions of if the speed limit does not match the land uses along the road, we are able to evaluate that, look at that, and, and potentially decrease those speed limits. Um, but we are moving away from 85th percentile, which is the um, historically uh, this, historically the way that it's evaluated. We're moving more towards a 50th percentile. Okay, great. So I think that that's all the questions for now. And we'll continue to answer questions after um, we review the concepts, but I think we can move on. So yes, ample time to go over the projects, which is very, this is the fun part. Yeah, so thanks Gabby. So like, like Gabby said, we had three different buckets, so to speak, of projects uh, in, the, in the Long Lincoln Park neighborhood. We have operational safety projects, we have 38 locations um, where this, uh, where, where we have these projects with 11 different types of projects, which you can see in the legend here, anywhere from new crosswalks, new stop bars, always stops, pedestrian crossing improvements. These are the quick 
uh, quick wins that we can put out there with our in-house crews and do within the next six months after our action plan is published. And then the next bucket, the NTMP projects, we actually had 10 projects that are proposed in the Loma Lincoln Park neighborhood. Uh, these are the ones, these are the real crux of this meeting. We really need your help in prioritizing which one of these are most important to the community. We have a limited amount of budget to be able to implement these. So we really need to hone in on the ones that are most important to you and, and, and feel the most significant for the community there. We typically end up with about four to six of these. So we need to go from 10 to four to six of these projects, depending on, um, on what their final costs end up being. And then future projects, we, we do have eight proposed projects here in the dash blue lines, which we'll go through as well. And um, these are ones that are outside of our budget and we will coordinate future with other projects and programs like I just mentioned with the speed, speed limit reduction studies with the Vision Zero program. But we would like to get a feel from you guys from the neighborhood of um, which ones are most important because we wanna only focus our attention and our time on the ones that actually make the most sense to the neighborhood. And then uh, we do have some other coordination projects that Gabby had mentioned where uh, we're taking all the input that we heard from the community, making sure that none of it's wasted and that we're communicating to the other projects and programs that are in the area that are currently happening to say, hey, we heard this from NTMP, go ahead and incorporate this into your project. So that's what, it, what we mean by other coordination projects at 10 locations. So we'll dive right in. I think Steph's gonna, um, so yeah, do you wanna explain this part, Steph? Yeah. Yep, yep. So we are going to show you the projects and the concepts and kind of walk through all of those actually within our tool. So I will take this opportunity to just um, actually pull it up on our website here. And this is what it will look like for you uh, when you log on to the website. And you'll get a little pop-up message here. Uh, this just provides some general information about the project and what the goal of this exercise is. You can just hit get started now. And what you can see is an interactive map. You can zoom in and out of. And um, you also have some tabs here on the left. If you um, happen to click, click through that intro, you can also find it in the about and section pane here. And then uh, we also have, this is the important piece um, we have all the information here and clickable points on the map. Hey, Steph, yeah. can I interrupt you for just a second? Can sure. you um, pull your microphone forward? It's it's having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that is this better? Yeah, it's okay. better when you turn your head a little bit the other way, actually. This way? <laughs> Either way, yeah. Okay. I'll just hold my mic up here. Sorry about that. That's um, and so this survey is what we are asking you to take so that we can prioritize each of these projects like Scott was mentioning. So um, you can click on each of these points and get information about it and reference it in the survey, which is kind of a little scroll bar here. Hey, uh, Steph. Yep. Sorry. I'm, it's still it's still doing it. Do you want me to um Yeah, quickly... you can take over. Yeah, so um so we were, so as Steph was just saying, so you can click the buttons on the left, um, you can click through them. It, the first part tells you about the project overall. Um, the second part of the survey, this bottom button that Steph has just clicked out here are the project types and um, they're color coded along with um, the projects on the right. So um, the operational and safety improvements, which we'll show you in a second, those are on a separate map that you can click on. The NTMP projects are um, colored in that pink color that Steph is showing you. And we're gonna walk through every single one of those. The future projects are the blue and then um, coordination projects are this grayish color. And um, so, I think we're going to start with the first um, NTMP project, and Brett is going to go through that. And so, when it, what you can see is when you click on the project, it gives you a description. And what we've tried to do is say the location, um, the issues that the issues that we heard from you, or safety issues, or issues that we've heard in the past. Um, if there are any of those operational and safety projects that can be um, just completed through maintenance, and so. 
through maintenance funding. And so these projects would be completed in addition to um, what you see on this concept and they will be completed either way, whether or not this concept is one of the ones that's prioritized for NT as an NTMP project. And then finally, um, you can click on the design, which Steph is doing right now, and that makes it, um, it enlarges it. And so, okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Brett now so that he can- Yeah, sure. Ahead. So, um, so yeah, this, this project is at Santa Fe and 14th Ave. This is the first one we'll talk about. Um, as many of you might know, the 14th Ave protected bike lane was recently uh, implemented through here. Uh, there is a crosswalk across the, what we call a channelized right turn lane that is currently uncontrolled. So, and a pretty fast uh, movement with a lot of cars going through there. So we heard from the public that this was an issue and we did some data collection um, and, it, and it does in some analysis as well. And it does meet uh, city criteria to install what we call a rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RFB. And what this does, you've probably seen these around, but when it's activated by a, by a pedestrian, a light flashes um, pretty rapidly and uh, it alerts drivers to yield uh, to people where they're crossing, where, where they have the right of way, which, which is any time a pedestrian encounters this crosswalk, the pedestrian has the right of way. So um, this will hopefully allow um, um, and better facilitate crossings uh, really to that, a lot of people are accessing that King Supers and, and to destinations to the south on Santa Fe Drive here. Uh, oh, an operational and safety project that is there that will happen either way as well. Um, I'll just call this out real quickly is the leading pedestrian interval. And so if you're not familiar with the leading pedestrian interval, what this is, is it allows, uh, so say a pedestrian is waiting at the corner and they, and they have a they have a, a do not walk symbol. Uh, once the uh, basically the, the the pedestrian receives an advanced walk uh, sign about three to five seconds before the right turners uh, turn across that crosswalk. What that allows is for the pedestrian to get out and and really cross that lane of traffic before that traffic is even released. It typically helps safety and comfort of pedestrians and and, and awareness of them being there. Go to the next project, which is 13th in La Pan. Um, so here we saw um, we had some, um, a broadside crash pattern. What that means is just a right angle crash and some visibility concerns at 13th in La Pan. And so we are going to do some intersection daylighting here, generally just, just as an operational safety project, basically pulling back the parking uh, so that the sight lines are a little clear. But in addition, an NTMP project that we're proposing for this area is to not only um, physically, uh, so, so with signage, we would clear it, but this NTMP project is actually reinforcing that no parking condition, first of all, with, with flex posts and, and, and striping, which is what the, the white um, bowl belts are on the corners. Um, we call them curb extensions or bowl belts. And what this also does is decreases the effective pedestrian exposure uh, across this, uh, across 13th Ave and then across La Pan as well. So, um, and in addition, it also slows down turning speeds so that, um, so that those conflicts are, if there are any conflicts, which we hope there are not, but if there are conflicts, those are slower speed conflicts, which are a little bit more mitigatable. We'll go to the next project. is uh, 12th and Mariposa, okay. So at 12th and Mariposa, we heard a lot about speeding and visibility concerns. And so this is also where the 5280 trail is contemplated to go through. Um, so we wanted to look here, did some data collection at this location. And we in fact saw that speeds are at nine miles an hour over, over what we would expect for this road at the, at the speed limit. So here we're proposing a pedestrian refuge island with some of those bull belts like I talked about at the previous location. So the pedestrian refuge um, in the middle of Mariposa not only facilitates safer crossings to and from Loma Lincoln Park, but it introduces what we call horizontal deflection at the intersection, which encourages slower through and turning speeds 
at the intersection of, of motorists, so increases safety there, and um, and shortens pedestrian crossing distances, like we mentioned before. So hoping that this is a, a improvement that can help facilitate access into and out of the park as well. Our next project, which one do we have next, is 12th, 12th and Calamath, okay. So um, here we heard a lot about uh, turning speeds. Actually, could you, would you mind going to the previous, just one first, just to see the issues? Yeah, okay. So we, so we saw a lot of, about um, high speeds along Calamath. This is also near a school and the park access. And so we, this is one of the higher commented um, uh, locations along Calamath. Now you can go to the design. Um, so what are kind of NTMP improvement here, kind of our, um, is, is these curb extensions again to slow down turning vehicles, right? Turning vehicles, but then also, um, uh, for, for left turning vehicles uh, coming from southbound Calamath to 12th Avenue, something that we've been doing is, is called centerline hardening. And what this is, is a series of flex posts leading up to the crosswalk um, along that yellow center line. And then on the inside of the crosswalk, actually having um, what we call a corner cushion, it can also be called a speed hump, but a rubberized speed hump to to uh, reinforce that, that um, tighter turn radius so that when passenger cars are trying to take a left, they're going all the way around that and slowing down and actually forcing them to slow down um, and, and decreasing the speed at which they do that, um, making it a better pedestrian environment as well. Um, and then it, this, this speed hump also allows, so when these bigger trucks do come through and they need space to make that turn, um, they can run over that, but they have to be doing that at a very slow speed. Um, all right, go to our next project. There's 11th and Calamath, uh, basically same exact thing as is uh, only a block away, not too far away. Um, same, same thing, same issues right next to a, a school. Um, and so uh, we would introduce uh, bulb outs here with paint, paint and flex posts and the center line hardening again on the east leg. One thing we've added here, um, since there is a bikeway entering the intersection from the east, is introducing some advanced stop bars to provide uh, uh, more visibility of bicyclists that are at this intersection. Um, and so they could get a head start um, going, uh, going across Calamath on the green. Next is 11th and Spear. This was probably our, one of our most commented locations. Basically folks having trouble crossing the street, riding a bike or even walking, speeding vehicles through here. So we are looking at some traffic signal improvements and signal timing evaluation to see if we can um, help with some of the left turn issues that we're seeing here. This is an operational safety project, but the larger project, the NTMP project, if you wanna go into that, um, there's quite a, quite a few things happening here. So, um, so one thing is going eastbound here on 11th Ave. Um, as many folks know, if you bike around uh, Lama Lincoln Park and are trying to access downtown to the east, you've probably taken this path and um, this bikeway. And as you know, you'll know then that a lot of the time um, cars use the bike lane <laughs> To, to access that eastbound right turn lane. So the first thing that we're looking to do is actually um, prevent them from doing that by adding some flex posts in the buffer to prevent those right turn vehicles from encroaching and, and creating a really unsafe environment where bikes need to snake through those vehicles we're trying to take a right in order to get through. Um, kind of just moving to the east, um, looking to mark the crosswalk across Alati to enhance just the, the visibility of that crosswalk that's already there and, 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 and signalized. And as you go east through the intersection, um, we uh, would keep the bike lane going through to the east of Spear, maybe adding additional buffer space to the existing bike lanes to create a safer and more comfortable experience as you go east. And then going west, 
Um, similarly, um, what we have found is that when we have <clears throat> some additional space to do this, we, we always would like to harden that approach between the bike lane and the travel lane to just reinforce that, hey, motorists, you need to stay out of the bike lane here and right turners, you need to get in the right turn lane before this, this point. So basically really consolidating where that bike motorist conflict can happen, making it a minimal distance so that we know when to expect that. And so, um, yeah, just to prevent that motorist encroachment from the right turn on the right turn. Also going west, adding a, a buffer to the existing bike lane to create a better experience there. As you know, over the bridge, um, as you likely know, it, it feels pretty tight if you've got if you've got a, uh, a queue of vehicles there. And then extending the bike box over the left turn lane. There's currently a bike box there, but it doesn't really um, it doesn't really allow for someone if they felt comfortable to do so uh, turn left to a lottie. Um, on the left turn green. Um, so we would extend that across the left, the left turn lane to make that happen. And then um, just a basic kind of improvement for us is to, to add green conflict markings uh, to the mouth of the southbound spear channelized right turn lane, just to um, increase awareness for motorists going, uh, that are entering 11th Avenue that you're going to potentially encounter bikes here. So that's, that's that project. Now the seventh NTMP project is at 10th and LePan. Uh, this also, we had visibility concerns. There was uh, a lot of requests for an all-way stop. This is one of the locations that aligns with the 5280 trail that's gonna be going around um, downtown. We do have an operational and safety project identified here that just that just has uh, us in, uh, daylighting the intersection by pulling back the no parking areas so that making sure there's no no cars parking in there. Uh, but our NTMP project, uh, yeah, shows these curb extensions, very similar to what you saw before with flux posts and paint. Um, this is a quick way, I mean, I, I should have mentioned this before, but this is a quick way for, a quick and efficient way for us to do these paint and post bulb outs to do more with less, um, get the same safety and comfort benefits um, with less. And so, um, yeah, we would be uh, slowing uh, vehicle turning speeds and shortening crossing distances here as well to see if we can improve that daylighting. Um, if you know, if we we're going to monitor this over the course of the next few months and, and continue to monitor the safety situation there, see if there's any additional improvements we would need to do. Uh, our eighth project is at 10th and Inca, same thing, visibility concerns, 311 requests to improve this, this pedestrian crossing. Um, either way, we will be adding new stop bars and intersection daylighting, but our NTMP project proposes uh, to include some bulb outs along with that, again, to reinforce the daylighting condition, uh, the sight distances at the intersection, uh, and decrease pedestrian crossing distances and turning speeds. Um, getting kind of to the end here. I think this is our second to last one here. This is our eighth in Mariposa. So um, <clears throat> we heard a lot about challenges crossing eighth um, when riding a bike and that we have speeding vehicles here. I, I'm sure <laughs> if you live in this area, you know about this viaduct coming off of eighth Ave. Um, you kind of, this is where you're entering kind of the more residential area of La Alma Lincoln Park. And you have a lot of folks trying to cross here. And so we heard a lot about that. So either way, our operational and safety improvement, we have, we have a couple of intersection geometric improvements and new stop bars, but really our NTMP project, the more significant one, um, is to do quite a few, a few things here. So um, we'll, start with, we'll start with the median on 8th Avenue. So this is probably the most significant portion here where we would look to close off that westbound left turn movement on the Mariposa. Um, there's not many, very many people doing that right now. And so it seems like it, this is space that could be better used to help facilitate these crossings. Doing that will allow us to add in a, pedestrian, a median refuge island um, to, to, yeah, narrow up, uh, 
to slow vehicle speeds. It allows people walking and biking to navigate only one direction at a time. So do a two-stage crossing. And then just north of there, going in the westbound direction, currently we have a right turn lane uh, going to Mariposa and then that little kind of fronted slip road. It's not really needed. It's kind of extra space, extra pavement, but it allows for really fast motor motorist turns. And so what we what we intend, what we propose to do is to take some of that space to bulb out, still allowing those driveway accesses, but take some of that space and, and narrow up that, that pedestrian crossing pretty significantly, thereby also reducing the westbound right turn onto Mariposa, reducing the speed of, at which you can do that westbound right turn onto Mariposa. And then in the southbound direction, um, if you're a bike, say, approaching this intersection, um, we propose to uh, add some vertical protection on that northwest corner to, to that and, and bulb it out to, to decrease that crossing distance. And then also with that 10 feet that we have that's been created by that, that median um, to actually have a little island that if, if a bike do, so chooses, they can do also a two-stage crossing and then continue south on Mariposa Street. Um, I think that's kind of all to really point out here. Um, in this, in this, uh, so in this, um, one question that we we immediately get every time that we show this is, um, why not close the eastbound left turn here on the Mariposa as well? Well, that <clears throat> is a valid question. We actually thought about that uh, early on for all the same reasons as closing down the westbound left. Um, that does have a little higher traffic volume and there is a RTD bus that does that route right now. And so in order, and we have a, a transit station just to the north of here, as you guys know, at, at the Osage station. So um, that was not something that we felt like we could do at this point, but we're still able to uh, add in a little bit, uh, a 10 foot refuge there to allow for bike crossings. And I believe this is our, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> Our last project here, I believe, maybe, um, is on 7th Ave. So uh, we heard a lot about the, e the need for an east-west bike connection through the Llama Lincoln Park neighborhood, particularly in this area. So, and, and also to connect to Denver Health to the rest of the neighborhood. And we have a couple, if you guys are familiar, if everyone's familiar with the uh, um, community network uh, bike planning effort, they actually have a couple north-south uh, bikeways coming through here, uh, one on Gallopago and one on Delaware. And so having an east-west facility that can connect into both of those and into Denver Health would be important. So um, we are proposing that we actually add in a neighborhood bikeway here, a formal neighborhood bikeway. And if you're not familiar with what a neighborhood bikeway is, it's not actual designated uh, bike space on, on the street. It actually uh, is where we are intentionally putting elements and treatments in the roadway uh, to make sure that vehicle volumes are low and that vehicle speeds are low so that it is safer and more comfortable to be a bike on that, to be someone on a bike on that street. So one of those projects and one of those what treatments that we propose here is at 7th in Mariposa where we would, you know, propose curb extensions, a new crosswalk across 7th Ave, stop bars, that's uh, part of an operational safety improvement. But then, yeah, the curb, the curb extensions would um, hopefully slow folks down on Mariposa. So when you're trying to make that, um, that movement from Mariposa to 7th Avenue, it's a little, a little safer. And then at La Pan in 7th, same thing, um, narrowing up the roadway so that it doesn't feel like a, like a speedway and um, making sure that, that's, that speeds are lower there. And then this neighborhood bikeway would cross Calamath and, and Santa Fe. So typically when we're at these signalized intersections, uh, we, there's gonna be heavier volume, uh, motorist queues here and so uh, typically, we want to make sure that that bike um, is very visible. And so proposing a couple of bike boxes where if there is a queue there, the, um, and, and so not only visible, but 
is prevented from having a right turn hook uh, issue where uh, a, a bike's trying to go through and someone's trying to take a right turn around them. So one solution that we have for that is having a bike box where the bike can basically skip the queue, get right in front and position themselves like where they're supposed to be in front of a car and continue moving along 7th Avenue. Um, so these bike boxes just provide that safe space for people biking to wait ahead of that queuing traffic. And then yeah, just, to, just to speak specifically about the alignment of the neighborhood bikeway, what we would do, we would go 7th Avenue. And then um, once we get to Gallopago, go down Gallopago for a minute, get on the uh, sidewalk. This will require a little bit more evaluation. We're uh, talking about easements through there and um, to, to use the alleyway to then connect to, I believe, Fox Street to go north and then 7th Ave to the east. Um, that seven dot stretch, we, we, we took some volumes and speeds there. It's very low volume, very low speed along that section. So it already is kind of that comfort level that we're looking for for bikes there. And then you could connect into Denver Health Campus or, or Delaware. So this, this neighborhood bikeway would just connect that whole area a little bit better. Um, yeah, so that's all for the NTMP projects. Um, it's a lot of projects. <laughs> it's a lot of projects. I told you it's going to get technical. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Jess, is there a lot of questions? Should we maybe uh, go to the questions first, or yeah, I think let's take a break. Um, yeah, let's get yeah, we're, right we're, a break from talking. <laughs> yeah. Although, yeah, you might have although, although a lot of the questions you have to answer, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So we do we do have a number of questions, and yeah, I think it would be helpful to review them before we move on. So um, I will start at the beginning. So the first question is from Greg and he noted that, um, and I'm pretty sure it's the 12th and Mariposa design that um, there are no new, there are new, no parking signs on Mariposa at Lincoln Park. And um, he's asking if street parking is being eliminated here. So Great question, Greg, um, there will daylighting be at this one, right? It's only daylighting. So we're not removing on street parking to the park, but obviously we are uh, removing a couple of spots in order to make this design happen. Right, Brad, in order to have yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's better not, sight distance of the pedestrian of the crosswalk area. There will be a few spaces that would need to be removed for this safety improvement. Uh, to be made, uh, yes, but it's not. It's not a a full. Uh, it's not a very significant uh, number of them. Right. Um, I'll say. Uh, right. I don't even think. I don't. I don't think um, we would need to take much beyond what already is uh, no parked on the east side. There might be a few spaces taken on the west side to better facilitate crossings into and out of the park uh, and slow down speeds on Mariposa. Um, certainly a trade-off. Okay, great. Um, and then the next question is about, um, it's a question and a comment, I guess I would say, at, it's for 13th and Osage. Um, it's from Matt and Ashley also agreed with Matt's comment. And the comment is that um, a traffic light is needed at 13th and Osage as there was a two car tow away crash there um, 48 hours ago. It's been a yeah. problem intersection yeah. for a while. So Gabby. Um, so, right. So that the good news and why is, you know, sort of identified as a coordination project is because there is a traffic signal coming um, at 13th and Osage. Um, we do have the funding uh, design is actually um, underway right now. It's more than just a signal project actually. So aside from obviously building a traffic signal there, we're also bundling it up uh, with a sidewalk project um, with, so that we can build a full sidewalk to the north. Right now there's, you know, there's a sidewalk gap on Osage itself um, to the north. And also what we're trying to work for and uh, towards to and why it's taking a little bit longer than, uh, than anticipated um, is actually we're trying to go also build a sidewalk connection through the railroad tracks. Um, but obviously that requires that additional coordination uh, with UPC and the railroads and RTD. 
And so um, the good news is that we do have the funding for, for the traffic signal itself. We do have the funding uh, for the sidewalk areas, um, you know, just immediately east uh, of, the, of the railroad tracks. But basically we're trying to figure out how to truly make this project a multimodal project um, and be able to obviously adjust the sign, adjust the, 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 that inter the sort of that median that we have right there by the railroad tracks so we can accommodate the protected bikeway uh, that we're, you know, that we're putting forward um, actually this summer. Um, and then in addition to that, that sidewalk gap uh, through the, you know, until sort of crossing the railroads. Um, so there is just give us a little time. So it will be, you know, we, we, we are working towards, uh, you know, building that signal there. And we know that it's an issue. Okay, great. Thanks, Gabby. Um, okay, and I think, Brett, this would be a question for you. Um, John is asking, why aren't safe crossings the default? Why do they have to meet criteria? Yeah, um, safe crossings are what we're going for. Um, I think when we talk about our whole city, um, <clears throat> we, we would love to put crosswalks at every single intersection of the city. Um, there are um, compliance, um, pieces to think about there and obviously cost and resource pieces to think about there. And so when determining that and where we want to focus, we have established criteria for that. And um, that criteria is ever evolving. And actually right now we we are reevaluating that criteria. I feel like we are we are constantly reevaluating that criteria as, as resources change, as best practice changes. Um, and so, so at this point, yeah, when it comes to traffic engineering, there are some certain criteria that we'd like to see met um, to make sure that we're installing them where they're needed the most, where they have the, the most significant safety issue or, or uh, where we have the most pedestrian demand, those kind of things. And so, um, but safety is definitely the, the, the driving force there. So um, it's, a good, it's a good question. Um, and then back to 13th and Osage, Matt was pointing out that um, it's not actually a two-way stop, that 13th is a through street. Right, yeah, maybe I did not explain myself. Right now is that, but you know, the, it, we will be building a full traffic signal that will basically, obviously stop traffic, you know, one-way traffic, you know, you know a, a controlled intersection completely so that there is, unless you're running the red light, you know, which is illegal. Um, it will bring a lot more safety to that intersection. Okay, great. Thanks, Gabby. Um, okay, so this is for 11th and Calamath. The, the question is, why is the heart and center line only going in on one side of the intersection? Um, and this is actually true also at 12th. Um, right. Yeah, so the the effectiveness of the hardened center line is when we have turns turning around that hardened center line. So on this one-way street, so Calamath is southbound, um, we have le uh, southbound left turns that are turning around that hardened center line that we've placed there. And then we have westbound left turns that are turning around that hardened center line. That's where we see the most effectiveness in slowing down those turns. If we were to put it on the west side, there's no turns trying to turn around that. If you look at the actual movements that are happening at the intersections, you've got a southbound right turn, not like turning around that. The bulb out is really controlling the speed of that turn there. And then the uh, eastbound you know, movements don't turn around it either. So that's the reason, it's a great question. I think when, when I look at these things at first too, I, I think the same thing sometimes. So. Okay, that's great. It looks like we got a comment from John that um, that made sense. So that's great. Um, okay, so the next question is, the, the next two questions are actually for 11th and Spear. Um, the first question is from Nolan, which is why is the bike lane hardening only flex posts and not concrete barriers to protect cyclists? Um, great question. Um, I think this can kind of go for all of our NTMP projects that we're showing, excuse me for the dogs, that we're showing in FlexPost. <clears throat> we, um, 
we're currently showing them with Flexpost because, like I mentioned, we can do uh, we can do more of that vertical protection uh, with less resources. We're spending less resources, and so we're trying to get the most safety bang for our buck by doing that. However, that doesn't mean in, in other NTMPs too. We've we've done this where if there are specific locations as we move forward into design, where we find ourselves that we can maybe it is important and we can fit. Um, we can fit uh, concrete into the budget and it's important for that specific place, we will do it. And so it's not out of the question that we wouldn't uh, potentially include concrete in some of these protection features like the bulb outs or, or things like that. They do just take uh, further evaluation and, and design and, and budget that will be figured out in future iterations of the project. Um, but we kind of have showed it with FlexPost for now because effectively they do, they do the same thing um, from a safety standpoint. And um, so, yeah, good question though. Great, okay. And then also at 11th and Spear, so for the island at the south end of the intersection, so between Alati and Spear, why not collect, why not connect it to the far north part of the Sunken Gardens Park? It looks like it's a vestige of when Alati was a two-way street. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think it's exactly right. It probably was a vestige. And I think what you're talking, so I actually used to live off of uh, Fox and I used to walk this way to work every day. And so I know exactly what you're talking about. So the, um, the island he's talking about is on, is, uh, on the south side of the intersection where a lot of intersects uh, stuff um, yeah. right there. And so there's a little slip lane or channelized right turn lane that is, I, I think exactly correct, a vestige of of the past, <laughs> uh, right just below that, there's a little slip lane. Yep, and that's no longer needed because Alati is is southbound. So um, that is something. I, and I guess what you're asking is, can we fill that in with with concrete and make it an island? I think. Or I guess at least maybe just close it off. And well, it is. A, it is actually. So it oh, it is closed off already. Yeah, it's already closed by FlexPost. Oh. Kind of see it in that aerial there. Um, so I think maybe the question is asking, you know, can we can we add more median there? Great and great idea. I think um, and put in trees is what John said. So we kind of need to remove the app in order to be able to put trees. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, we the we're, community we're, can randomly put planters in there. You know, yeah, we we're I and I and I hate to keep saying this, but we we do have limited resources, and so. We're trying to figure out where we have the biggest safety bang for our buck. As, as you might know, um, from an NTMP standpoint, we're looking to do neighborhood scale improvements that really help the safe, mostly the safety, but also the, the comfort of people walking and biking. Um, if that is an improvement that <clears throat> the neighborhood feels like, like that, would, that, that would improve safety, like we could potentially pursue that. But the options that we've we've laid out before you today are the ones that we feel like have the, probably a larger safety benefit. Um, that one already being closed off, no vehicle interaction with it. While I, I would agree um, at that at some point should be filled in and maybe we can have that as a future project, Gabby, or something like that. Um, but um, from an NTMP standpoint, you know, I think we'd be looking to do some actual some safety improvements. And just to um, point out, we got another a second to that, that um, it would be great if, if it could be filled in and landscaped. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, thanks, Brett. So um, we do, have a, we have a question from Stella, which is a good question. She said, if you can identify or comment, if you can identify the size of costs, such as, you know, doing dollar sign, two dollar signs, or three dollar signs to kind of give a general feel of the cost. It might help us in the prioritizing. Yeah, good point. It is yeah. definitely it's definitely um, a good point. I think um, for you know, I guess for this first for this initial phase is understanding um, what you know what are your um, what are your, your priorities without thinking of that cost? I think all of these projects may be doable um, for the most part under the, you know, obviously under the NTMP, not all of them at the same time, but basically we just need to know which ones are coming to the top um, for you all um, without, you know, 
knowing that the majority of these for the most part are going to stay paint and flex post, we don't want you to be sort of constrained to buy that, that, that dollar figure. Um, I think that we know what has happened, right, Brad, in the other NTMPs is that we have after this phase, it's like basically shown, okay, this is, this is sort of what we're estimating. And we kind of do need to sort of go to that next step of like potentially starting deciding a little bit more robust to really come to a good understanding of how much one particular element could cost. Right now we have a general idea um, but until we really can kick it up to the next level design, we can't really put a, that sort of final one, two, three dollar sign on it. Um, and we, unfortunately, we can, we know that we cannot bring all of them to that sort of the next phase. Am I completely off here, Jess, um, with that? Yeah, I think, um, I think that that's a pretty good way to describe it. Um, Definitely the, yeah, I think exactly what you said, the paint and post is cheaper than concrete. Right. And um, and I mean, some things can be also, you know, the more paint that's something that a design takes, obviously the more cost. But yeah, it's really helpful for us to understand this because we are really looking at trying to maximize um, what we move forward with, yeah. with respect to what the community wants and cost. Right. Okay, we do so, have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we just um, need to go really quickly through the long-term projects or do we want to continue answering questions? There's just a, yeah, let me, why don't we do the Aetha Mariposa questions? Okay. Um, we did get a comment for Aetha Mariposa from John that he does think that this is an improvement, this design, um, proposed design. And then we did get a question about why are there no crosswalk markings north and southbound at Mar at yeah, north and southbound, exactly. Yeah, so our, um, I think our best answer to this is that um, with the city policies where we're at now, which are uh, ever changing, as I said, ever a fall thing, but um, we are actually, there, there might be able to be crossings here. Our policy is currently under reevaluation. Um, and, uh, but that policy has not necessarily been finalized yet. So um, uh, when that is finalized, we do anticipate that we might, would be able to mark crosswalks, but now as the policy stands, um, we, we haven't been able to show that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, we are trying to figure out how we can make that happen, but right now under the current policy that we still have to go by, uh, we have to show this. For the time being. Um, okay, and then a, a kind of a second part of this question is for eastbound 8th, for vehicles that are um, go, traveling eastbound on 8th, will there be any signal or speed reductions added given the poor sight lines at, on the raised viaduct? So we won't, we won't be adding a full signal here or anything. Um, there, there, I, I, we will be adding, we can add signage though here, um, especially if, if we install a crosswalk, um, there will be additional signage, maybe even an RFB. So I think, I think high level, this, this one is a little bit on this, this is kind of what you're looking at is the improvement that can happen. There are some additional improvements that are under further evaluation right now. Um, and one of those is like the RFB, maybe crosswalk type treatments. Um, and yeah, there would be there would be signage here that that could that would uh, could could show a crossing. Could just just make make motorists aware of a crossing bikeway, uh, crossing peds, uh, things of that nature. Okay, great. And the last question, um, John, I may need you to. I think it's on the 7th Avenue bikeway that we were showing. And the question is on the bikeway, can signs be added that say expect bikes or perhaps mid block bike boxes to visibly indicate to drivers that bikes have priority? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so along this route, um, what we what we are have what we have been installing, and I'm not sure if, if John uh, or any others have been able to be involved in some of our more recent bike planning efforts. 
But with all these neighborhood bikeways, we will be installing wayfinding signage. And that wayfinding signage is actually pretty cool. I think it's probably one of the uh, cooler graphics that the city has made for a sign. It's, it's a cool, uh, if you've seen any of this installed, we just recently installed some on Niagara. It's a little bear riding a bike and it says Denver uh, Neighborhood Bikeway. And these things will be installed along the neighborhood bikeway, where particularly where there's intersecting bikeways. And so there will be signage that says, hey, this is a neighborhood bikeway. And then the thought is that instead of telling people, hey, this is a bikeway, slow down, um, the thought is that the infrastructure improvements that we put out there actually help to reinforce the speed. So the visual narrowing, if you're familiar with that term, the visual narrowing of the roadway, so you don't have these this 36 foot wide pavement. Instead, you might have 20 foot wide to sneak through. That that slows people down. So it's there's 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 some evidence that have suggested to say, hey, just slow down. That doesn't really help. You actually have to put stuff in the roadway uh, to make that happen. So um, that mixed with the wayfinding signs, we hope will really reinforce that that condition that there this is a different street. Bikes will be here. Uh, but a great, great sentiment from John there, because that's that's exactly what we're trying to do. Great. Okay. And then um, the last question that we have is, um, and Gabby, I'm wondering if you can answer this. It's outside. Mark asked, um, he said that he knows that it's not in the area of study, but is anything planned for improving Lipan Street between 7th and 5th? Right. Um, I, I was looking through it. There's no plans right now um, for, for, for improving that stretch of, of Lipan under um, the, uh, you know, basically that the, the, the Sixth Avenue uh, viaduct. Okay, great. So, and, um, and just to answer also Greg's uh, comment about the railroad crossing. Um, yes, of course, we will be coordinating, you know, the new traffic signal at 13 Dino Sage with the railroad truck crossings, all of those things, you know, any, any of these elements are always coordinated. Part of the reason why uh, installations in 2023. Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah. Coordination with the railroad, if, if, if you're not familiar, takes a very long time. So, but it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a huge safety issue. And so we, we need to make sure we're doing that. So. Okay, great. So um, I think that's the end of the questions that I had tracked. Um, so, so should we go over really quick? I know we only have 20 more minutes um, or right? What time are we supposed to end the meeting? Seven? Yeah, we have 20 minutes. So yeah, I think it would be great to go through the future projects because we're also hoping to get prioritization from everybody on that. Great. So we'll kind of speed through these stuff. We can tag team this. Um, so these future projects, again, are the ones that won't necessarily be advanced with the NTMP money, uh, but they are projects that we're gonna pass off to other projects and programs uh, with future budgets basically to, 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 to uh, advance. So um, this one is at 13th and Calamath, basically just realigning the westbound traffic signal heads with the traffic travel lanes to, to reduce confusion. Um, basically this would, this would require may require a major rebuild of the signal. Uh, so while it's a safety project, that would be put on the signals list. That would be passed along to the signals program. Um, this is a big one, Calamath between 6th and uh, at Colfax. So as you know, with our NTMP, we're typically focused on neighborhood scale stuff. Um, so um, the larger roadways that go through uh, while we do have some ability to improve crossings and things like that here and there, like you've seen 11th and Spear and other things, those larger corridor studies, we can't necessarily do those with the NTMP. Uh, those, we're going to gather your input and move along to the Vision Zero program, which, which does these types of safety assessments along the corridor. So at Calamath between 6th and Colfax, we heard a lot about safety issues there. So we identified kind of a quarter wide study looking at intersection concerns, analyzing existing conditions from a crash standpoint and providing a plan for safety mitigations along that road. In a more comprehensive fashion even than we've done because we've done little things here and there but there needs to be a comprehensive study there. And then same thing for 6th Ave. Um, yeah, almost same exact thing. We heard a lot about trying to cross across, across 
across Sixth Ave, uh, whether as a pedestrian or as a vehicle. Um, a lot talking about controlling access to and from Sixth Ave. Um, that's not something we're necessarily set up to do from an NTMP standpoint, but that can be done in a in a in a corridor wide, more comprehensive uh, Vision Zero study. And then we'll go to Mariposa. This one, um, it was an NTMP project previously, but you know we decided this is probably something that's more for the future. So uh, between 8th and 13th Ave, basically, so the bike lane right now um, is, I think it's a five foot wide bike lane against parking, which is, is doesn't necessarily meet standard right now for our bikeway standards. And so we would propose to give a little bit more room for that bike space to allow um, for, for bikes to basically maneuver around the Doring issue and get out of the Doring zone of those parked vehicles. And so this would require uh, us moving that line about one or two feet over. So it's a minor change here, uh, which is why it didn't pop up as high on our NTMP list, if that makes sense. It's a very minor change for a whole Mariposa stretch here between 8th and 13th. Eleventh and Osage, you might be familiar with this, but uh, on the northwest corner of this intersection, the, the crosswalk te technically ends in a driveway. And so not a, a uh, desirable situation. Um, so the future project is to install some a different situation there with our actual receiving curb ramp that will require some coordination with the private property to truncate their driveway a little bit in order to do that. Uh, I will note just north of here, there's a coordination project at 12th and Osage. Our pedestrian program is carrying forward a pedestrian crossing from the school uh, there over to the park. So that is, that is moving forward and will be implemented this summer. And then here, 11th and Navajo, um, <clears throat> pretty high pedestrian area. This is a need that was identified in, in our study. Uh, it does provide a little bit of coordination with DPR and it requires us to build, rebuild, build a curb ramp into the park. Um, but basically the, the project will be to add a crossing across 11th Ave at Navajo to facilitate better crossings into the park. And we already did that one. Uh, ah, yes. And lastly, I think this is lastly, um, a future project at 6th and Acoma. As you might know, Denver Health recently built a parking garage to the south of 6th. There are a, a, a heck of a lot of ped crossings happening there. Um, and so uh, we're working with Denver Health to see what a signal implementation might look like there. It likely would be what we call a Hawk signal or a pedestrian hybrid beacon. Um, that could be activated by pedestrians that are going to and from Denver Health there, but to better facilitate crossings there and um, accommodate those folks that are not crossing mid-block without a, without a signal. So that's obviously a larger project that will be passed along to our signals program. Oh, lastly, um, Zunai Street. So this is on the west side of I-25, a little more industrial land uses, but uh, this would require a little bit of a traffic lane reduction analysis to assess the impacts of a reduced lane here. Um, it would require further coordination with some of our other DOTI projects and CDOT uh, being so close to I-25 there. So that's another future project that we'll be coordinating with. Is that it, Steph? That is it. So now, um, now that we have been able to go over all of these lovely projects and, uh, you know, I told you it was going to be a lot of info. Um, this is where um, we need you all to help us spread the word. Um, you know, Steph and Ed literally walked you through the, um, you know, the actual website of how you're going to see things. And so hopefully it's easy enough for folks to, to understand. Um, and so basically we are going to leave uh, that survey opened, um, you know, until when, Steph? Until March 11th, March. 
March 11th, sorry, I'm like, um, until March 11th. Um, actually, would you mind, since we have a couple more minutes, um, can you jump back on the webpage and actually, again, show where on the right side is the is the surveys? So, so yeah, so there you go. So you go into the survey and basically, uh, we ask you a couple of questions, right, about yourself so that we have a, you know, a general understanding of if this outreach strategy actually kind of worked. And then you go down, I don't know, Steph, um, Jess or Steph, um, basically you move them around uh, by your preference. So after reviewing the, you know, each one of them on the map, you basically you know, zigzag them around by your preference. Um, obviously they're identified by name. Um, tell us your comments you know, uh, about you know, how, you know, any comments that you may have, how you're ranking them or whatever. Um, or which ones is like, ah, you missed this, you know, obviously let us know that. And then it's the same element for future projects. Um, again, you move them around and we ask you um, for, for comments. And then, you know, operation and safety, we're not asking you to rate those, to rank those, um, because those are sort of like a given. So, but we are providing you the locations, as you can see, it's lovely list of locations where all of those, you know, sort of quick implementations that we can do in house um, are, we are able to do. Um, so you'll be able to find that list of the, the ONS projects right there as well. Um, and that's basically how hopefully we have made it simple enough for folks to understand um, how we can help, you know, how you can help us prioritize these projects. So this survey in particular is going to be open until March 11th. Um, and if you have, um, you know, Again, sort of what was that last question? I'm sorry. Oh, email updates. Oh, I keep getting, by the way, I keep, you know, I, people keep asking me about like, hey, how do you jump into the distribution list? This is how you jump into the distribution list. And what we're going to, sorry, I always get pinged about like, you know, why don't we, doesn't daddy just have a general update generalist? And, um, and I, you know, we just, I've, you know, I've been told that we cannot have one. Like we have to have your permission to um, add your email to a particular project that we cannot just share between projects emails. So this is how, if you don't mind also sharing that information, this is how folks uh, can get into this, be in the loop of Allah and the Lincoln Park. Um, and so then basically the survey is gonna be open. Um, if you have questions or comments, if you wanna jump back out, Steph, to that one, yes. Um, so, I, you know, the survey is gonna be open until 11th. If you have questions, feel free to email us right there. That is the, the webpage, you know, for this. And then again, you know, we hope to have, um, you know, that sort of prioritization list uh, by April and then have a final draft action plan um, for the neighborhood um, in, in May. So that is sort of our strategy uh, from now. And um, what is it? Um, I do, oh, how soon? We, I know that, Matt, we have a question actually, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how soon would the bridge over 14th and Spear be done? I think I think it was supposed to be done by the summer, right, Brad? I don't know. Do you know by any chance? Not sure. No, we can. Maybe... I know that it was one low flow season. Yep. I know that. So we're almost wrapping up, right? So I would have to double check on that, but I do. I don't remember. I do know that it, you'd obviously we were kind of freaking out that it was going to be closed during sort of that prime season um, back in the fall. Uh, you know, where we have the excellent biking weather and we were concerned about if any delays could actually potentially delay it for the summer as well. So we would have to double check um, on that, Matt. Um, but hopefully, you know, it's, it's not going to be more than two years. Now, just for the audience, after this lovely bridge project um, in September, we kick off the, the 8th Avenue reconstruction over the plat. And that lovely project is two years in the making. So it's going that, that it's two low flow seasons. Um, so where basically all cars uh, are, you know, cars are going to be detoured through Federal Boulevard, um, hopefully not using Decatur. Um, but, um, but that project is two low flow seasons, which basically river low flow seasons, which basically means two years of construction. Um, that one, I think, is like a 90-year-old bridge that it's not in the greatest shape ever. Um, but that one also is adding 10-foot uh, sidewalks on both sides of the bridge and better connections over to, to the park right over there. And uh, again, my, my better uh, sidewalk connections across. So um, that is true. Hey, if we succeed on making the cater safe, then volumes won't matter. Yes, if we slow down, if we make it difficult enough for people, they will not use it as a cut-through. You're right, John. 
Um, so anyway, so yes, um, if you don't mind, please again, sharing this information with your friends, family, neighbors, um, so that we can get as much feedback as possible. We need to make this, um, you know, obviously a success in getting decent amount of feedback. So we will certainly appreciate it. And if you have any questions, uh, the team is here uh, for anything that you may have. Did I miss anything, Ms. Jess, uh, Mr. Brad, Steph? Um, I don't think so. Thanks, Stella. That was that was nice. Stella um, told us that we're doing good work. Absolutely. And um, Matt also just said that the Eighth Avenue Viaduct is new in the nineteen nine in nineteen nineties nineteen eighties. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a oh no. Okay, so it's not a ninety. Which one is a ninety? Well, maybe the understructures. I don't know. There's there's a rehab that happens, but now that bridge, if you're actually walking on it, and there's a semi that happens to be on it as well, the bridge kind of shakes a little. So that one is one of those bridges that need to be replaced like ASAP. I, I know that just because that's why they were like, we cannot make it happen in, in one year. We have to, you know, we have to literally replace the entire thing. Um, I wonder if you guys are talking about two different bridges, I think, because uh, Matt just pointed out the viaduct. Um, but anyways, probably. Anyway, so. But <laughs> yes, there's a lot yeah. of older infrastructure in Denver. Let's just put it that way. Period. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, thank you again so much sort of for joining us. I will be happy to stick around if anybody has any questions or if you're gonna want, want to start filling out the survey right now. Um, but you know, that sort of wraps up, you know, our meeting seven minutes ahead of time, you know, which is great. Um, and that gives you for those who are interested, uh, uh, the um, in, in other bikeway elements, we have a uh, the next Thursday, we uh, the 24th, we have an update and all the fun projects that are taking place on Broadway Lincoln, including the Lincoln Transit Enhancements and the Broadway uh, Multimodal, the, the protected bikeway, two-way bikeway over there. So uh, please definitely join us if uh, obviously, if, if you also bike on that side of town. Um, so with that, thank you. Um, I think that should be the last slide, correct? Yes, so thank you for joining us and have a lovely, um, what did I say today? Thursday night. <laughs>